Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. One of the best Nintendo DS emulators is now available as a standalone app on Android, Melon DS. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, in terms of Nintendo DS emulation on Android, the current king is Drastic DS, but this emulator does come at a cost. Now, the current best free alternative is either RetroArch or Lemuroid using the Melon DS Core, and just recently, Melon DS came out as its own standalone app. It's free, it's open source, and it's highly customizable. This is going to be a game changer. To download this one, just head over to the Google Play Store and install it. It's 100% free. Once you've installed it and booted it up, the very first thing to do is to locate your games and then select Use This Folder. If it won't let you select Use This Folder, just move your games into a different folder overall. For example, if they're just sitting in Downloads, you might not be able to use the Downloads folder. So just create a folder within Downloads and then use that. Once you've done that, your game should populate in the list. The next step I recommend doing is pressing the settings icon for the game you wish to play. The current options at the time of this video are fairly limited. We have boot system, microphone source, controller layout, and low GBA ROM. If you press boot system, you have three different options. Default, DS, and DSi Experimental. For most games, you should just be able to leave it at default. For the microphone source, you have default, none, blow, or device microphone. You can use your device as a microphone if you want. For the controller layout, you have three different options. Use global layout, default, or create your own. Now, if you want a specific controller layout for a specific game, you can do that here, or you can change it for every single game in the main menu. To create your own layout, just hit the plus button on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Then you can go on ahead and change the controls as you see fit. You can configure them pretty easily here and you can even add components. For example, if you wanted a button to swap your screens or add a reset button, you can do that too. You have the options to edit both vertical and landscape controls. To switch between the two, just tilt your phone. Once you're done, just click save and exit or if you've screwed something up, just hit reset to default. Now to access the global settings for the emulator, just click the three buttons on the top right hand corner of the main screen. And here there are some options you can tinker around with, but it is fairly limited. If if you're looking for performance options, there really aren't a whole lot of them. By default here, most of the performance options are already selected, so there really isn't a whole lot to do. I wish they had frame skipping on this one, and I'm assuming it'll be added fairly soon. If you want to make your game look a little bit different or try to make it look a little bit better, you can change the video filter if you want. Playing Dragon Ball Origins 2 on a Google Pixel 5 and I was running into some frame rate issues. It wasn't stable, it was dropping from 60 all the way down to about 30 and pretty much everywhere in between, I couldn't get a stable frame rate. And this happened in both portrait and landscape modes. Now I did notice when I turned this into landscape modes, the screens weren't set up very good at all, but you can adjust things right on the fly. You can adjust the screen size, the screen position to make things work for you. And you can even flip screens around here. Now to me, I find DS games play a heck of a lot better in portrait mode. In landscape mode, I just find them weird. Now at the time of filming, the standalone version of Melon DS is still in pretty early development. It's not fully fleshed out yet, it's not optimized yet, and it's probably not going to work the best on every single phone out there. I couldn't get it working smoothly on my Google Pixel 5, but if I use the Melon DS Core and RetroArch, it works like a charm. On top of that, Drastic DS is still better in terms of performance, but I'm willing to bet that things may change in the future for Melon DS. If you're looking for a free standalone emulator for Nintendo DS, I would recommend Melon DS. It's only going to get better in time, and it's not too shabby right now. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. I'm really excited to see Melon DS on the Play Store, and I can't wait to see what's next. Let me know your thoughts on Melon DS in the comments below. And let me know if you think Melon DS is going to dethrone Drastic DS as the best DS emulator on Android. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.